is this thing on? Ooh, looks like I have a YouTube channel. Who would have thought? 2020, who would have thought? <laughs> my god, oh my god. Okay. Hey guys, um, welcome to Base HQ. Today I will be reviewing Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. It was the first pick of our new book club. Yeah, let's get into it. Bernadine takes us along a journey with 12 characters in 400 pages, I believe. And then those 400 pages are split into four sections and each section follows three characters. And then in an additional 20 pages towards the end, we find out how the characters sort of are linked across sections as well, if that makes sense. That final part is one of my favorite parts because it like, you know, it like ties it all together. It's like when you put on makeup and then you're like, mm, not too sure about this and then you add fixing spray. Yes, chapter five was the fixing spray, I feel. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it really, mwah, mashallah, it like brought it all together. So the theme of the book is intersectionality and I believe the genre is LGBT fiction. When we look at the dedication of this book, we get a clear foreshadowing of the intersectionality that we're going to come across in the book. I'll read a bit. So actually in the group we, re we really like that little beginning. I think I think we were like, ooh, mm, I can with that, yeah. Intersectionality at first is comes from the characters. I mean, the characters are, all 12 of them are somehow linked to the LGBT community. But then on top of that, there's women of color in here. There are characters who deal with ageism. There are characters who are dealing with abuse, who are survivors of abuse. I mean, so there's a lot happening and each character is very layered. I mean, that's definitely one huge takeaway from the book is that no one was really boring or anything. I think you could have easily written a book about each character, actually. That's how complex the characters were. And then secondly, there's intersectionality just on the pages. So what I mean by this, there's no punctuation. And this was my biggest annoyance. There's no punctuations about this book. There's no punctuation. I mean, some people might like that. I, for one, grew up on Tumblr and I came across lots of poems of this genre or style of writing, I guess. It's not my thing. And frankly, that weighed a lot. So if you have complexity of the characters and lack of punctuation, it was like this. It, it made it much more difficult to actually read the book and concentrate and focus on the characters. I mean, it wasn't until the last maybe 10 days of September when we sort of had to wrap up the book for the book club that I actually almost had to force myself to read the book. I feel like if it hadn't been for the book club, I probably wouldn't have finished it. I mean, I was very tempted to let it be, which is a shame because I, as I said, I feel like you could definitely write a book about all of the characters, but it was just too much. Um, if you've read Game of Thrones, if you've read, what else has, a I mean, yeah, let's stick to Game of Thrones for a sec. There are a lot of characters, a lot of, all the, a lot of the characters are interlinked and have something to do with each other and go back centuries and on top of that they even describe the kingdoms, they describe the nature, they describe everything in such detail and still that somehow felt easier to follow than Girl, Woman, Other um, and I really do think that that's mainly due to the lack of punctuation. I would have to go back quite a few times the first maybe 100 pages. I mean personally for me it didn't really become enjoyable until chapter 2. Um, that was a really nice chapter to read and I would love honestly 
to see those characters develop even more. I remember the first, <laughs> the first few pages that I read without punctuation. I was so confused. I mean, Bernadine, Bernadette, where is it? You have to go back and say, okay, who said what actually? That was one huge annoyance um, out of the way. I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't want it to be a book rant. I mean, it's still a book review. Massive no for me personally. I guess the third part of the intersectionality, or maybe this is more of an effect of the lack of punctuation, was that the characters seemed very angry. All of these characters reminded me of the type of person that you would meet at, let's say, an art event or a black feminism event or any type of society or event that you would usually expect quite open-minded people. And then imagine that you meet someone, you guys click, and you decide to go for coffee or drinks after the event and then once you're sitting down and talking a bit more and also sort of taking in your surroundings you realize that they're actually not as open-minded as they portray themselves or think that they are but they're actually very condescending and judgy that's how it felt reading the minds of some of the characters it it felt as if they used their experience plus the possible academic knowledge that they had to just look down on their surroundings or people who disagreed with them and you see that with one character with her friends another character you see that with their mom and it was just it didn't really bring up any nice feelings genuinely the thing about this book i feel like if i had read it perhaps a year ago when it had just come out or when it had just won the prize I would have maybe had a more different reaction. I feel as though right now, with the past six months that we've had behind us as a black woman, this, this is not the experience that I would want to read about. Um, yeah, it makes me wonder. I mean, I wonder how I would have perceived this book if I was a black man. I feel like it, there's so much potential for it to open up conversations, to allow us to think critically about certain topics, but instead it just feels like it's bashing rather than showing or explaining. But that was really annoying because there's so many good topics that are in here that one could explore. There was a short section where one of the characters mentions the reading list for her gender, race and class module and those are all really good authors and those authors are people that you should study, you should study their works, I mean there's Aimé Césaire, there's Angela Davis, there's Franz Fanon, there's Gloria Steinem, I mean, this is a good list and this book just after reading it, I went to check some of the other reviews, not too many, not s so that they wouldn't influence what I thought. And then I also looked at some of the interviews with the author and there was also a question about why she had let out punctuation. Bernadine mentioned that the lack of punctuation was to allow more free-flowing and sort of create a fusion fiction. I mean, for me, it put the fusion in confusion, to be honest. I mean, I had quite high expectations for the book, I believe. Mainly because of the author's origins and then also because it won the Booker Prize. Right, so, should you read it? Are you resilient? Uh, do you have time to spare? Yeah, I mean... It's not a must read, okay? Um, it was funny because <laughs> this was the bookworm's first pick. At the end of the month, I shared my review on my personal Instagram and I got some questions <laughs> from friends asking, yo, I just bought this book, so should I not read it? And frankly, I mean, 
please, by all means, still do. I still want to hear people's thoughts about it. I mean, whether I recommend it is a different question, right? Going <laughs> to the bookworm's rating system, my glass is still full. Um, better yet, I think my glass, when the waiter came and poured a bit for me to try it out, I said no thank you. Yeah. So now the fun stuff. At Bookworms, we are celebrating our first month as an official book club. This was month one, second month now, October, we are reading Chocolate by Joanne Harris. Um, feel free to join us, of course, but we also have a little giveaway to celebrate the first month. So there's three parts to entering this. Make sure you're following bookworms.uk on Instagram, like the post, and share it on your story. I'll try to link the actual post down below, and then from when this video, oh my god, I'm such a YouTuber, from when this video is uploaded, you'll have, I believe, six more days, and then the winner will be announced on the 15th of October. So feel free to join us at bookworms.uk on Instagram. Welcome to the symposium. Yeah, follow me on at last name base. Click, subscribe, do whatever you want. I'll be back to introduce myself. Tap, tap, tap in. Tap, tap, tap in.